So, let us continue this uh, lecture with uh, what we have planned last time, um, namely adjoint and uh, adjoint determinant formula. So, I will prove it today. So, let us recall what we did last time. Last time for a, a matrix square matrix A, Aij in MNK, we have defined the adjoint matrix. the adjoint matrix that we have denoted A D J A and this is uh, defined uh, A I J tilde where a i j tilde is defined minus 1 power i plus j capital A j i and what is capital A i j and capital A i j they are defined I will define them in terms of the, the standard delta function. So, we have delta E, this is standard determinant function on k power n. n times standard alternating n multilinear form. form on k power n. So, this is an element in alt n k power n and this is one dimensional that is the most important fact we have been using in this. And this capital A i j is minus 1 power i plus j delta E evaluated on x 1 to x i min, uh, x j minus 1 e i x j plus 1 to x n where these uh, x 1 to x n are the columns of A. So, I will write it here this is also it is x 1 x n. So, they are the columns column vectors of A. Uh, remember here, so this so is very easy you take a standard determinant function and at the jth position you put the standard e i th vector and evaluate the standard determinant function there and this value is a uh, some scalar and uh, last time I showed you why this minus 1 power i plus j occurs. So, this was the adjoint matrix and now uh, I want to prove. So, we will prove the adjoint determinant formula, but before that I will take this opportunity also to uh, prove the expansion theorem. So, remember um, a determinant of A by definition it was summation, summation running over sigma in S n sin sigma and the product, product is from j equal to 1 to n a sigma j j and also this is equal to when you replace sigma by sigma inverse in this summation then it is sigma in S n sin sigma product i is from 1 to n a i sigma i. Now, this one this one is the determinant expansion of the determinant in terms of the the column 
the first column this is expansion Uh, expansion in terms of first column. What does one mean by that? If you write the columns like this, this is the first column and what you do? You take the first entry, remove this row, remove this column and take the minor. Then go to the next entry with the alternating sign. Then this entry, remove this row, remove this column. Uh, remove this row, remove this column and whatever the min n minus 1 minor comes that determinant. So, it is one can define it inductively also like this and this is these are the terms of those. The sign comes because it is alternating. No? Similarly, the second equality is by using the first row. So, first row that is what usually it was took it took standard way to define like 2 by 2 we used to do like this in the school, take this entry times this, take this entry with a minus sign times this and so on. So, this is the expansion in terms of the first column and this is expansion in terms of first row and somehow it was preferred rows. But, but if you if you see our exposition uh, columns are better exposed for some reason. Okay. So, now um, I want to use the adjoint entries to also give expansion of the determinant in terms of any ith row or any jth column not necessarily first ones. So, that is the next, next theorem I have written. So, that is so, the theorem I want to prove is this is I will call expansion theorems. Theorem for determinants. So, we have a matrix A, A I J. and uh, i and j are in between 1 and n, they are fixed i and j fix. So, in the definition i was 1 and j was also 1 and then determinant of a equal to summation, summation is running from k equal to 1 to n uh, minus 1 power k plus j uh, entry of the k j the entry of the matrix times this a k j. This is expansion in terms of the j th column. So, just remember this is expansion of debt in terms of jth column. Similarly, now expansion in terms of the ith row that is summation k equal to 1 to n minus 1 power i plus k a i k capital A i k this is expansion of debt in terms of ith row. Both are very important because for some reason if your matrix has uh, ith row or jth column has many 0 entries, then it is better to expand in terms of that row or that column because then the computation will become faster instead of applying Gauss and bringing up them to this position that position you know directly you can. So, that will save time for calculation that is the and later on if I have more time or maybe in the next course I will uh, also prove expansion theorems when not in terms of one row or one column, but 
in terms of bunch of rows and in terms of bunch of columns. So, that will be also interesting, but I do not know whether I will finish in this. Okay, so, uh, let us prove this. Uh, it is enough to prove the so proof enough to prove the first equality. Because the second equality will be uh, same when you replace A by A transpose, and we already know A and determinant A and determinant A transpose have the same value. So, it is always our philosophy that use the theory results to make the computation faster. Okay, so, this is okay. So, um, it is enough to prove the first equality. Now, what is the determinant? I will use. alternating multilinear form. So, determinant A is by definition delta E evaluated at the columns x 1 2 and j th column is somewhere here x j x n where delta E is, is the standard and it is you think of it is a fun, it is a map from m n k to k this m n k you can think of k n cross k n cross k n n times. This is alternating multilinear form, this is standard alternating it, it we define these by using the standard basis of k n and the standard basis also we think like columns. So, in this so what is given? So, in this I am going to put so what is x j? x j is the jth column of A. So, that is delta E I am going to put x j. So, what is x j? x j is therefore, summation summation is running over k equal to 1 to n A k j E k. We have used the standard basis elements to write this column in terms of the standard basis. So, the coefficients are obviously the entries in the jth column the first entry is a 1 j, second entry is a 2 j and so on. So, I am just going to put that in this summation k is equal to 1 to n a k j e k and all others are same columns x 1 to other than the j entry I have not changed. Now, what do we do with this? Use the fact that the delta e is alternating and multilinear. So, I will take this sum out. So, therefore, this is equal to summation is running over k equal to 1 to n delta uh, not delta. So, the coefficients first. So, a k j delta e x 1 to x j minus 1 then here is e k x j plus 1 to x n. This is just a multilinearity. And what is this? This is how precisely what we have defined capital A k. So, this is minus 1 power k plus j capital A k j. So, that is it. This is summation k equal to 1 to n a k j uh, this when you take it out minus 1 power k plus j capital A k j. This is what we wanted to prove. So, this shows if your definitions are in order the proofs are also easier. Okay. So, now, now we come to the adjoint determinant formula. So, remember we have defined adjoint of A A d j. is a transpose of so that is a i j tilde and a i j tilde is minus 1 power i plus j and not capital a i j but capital a j i it is a transpose of and now what i want to prove is 
this is called adjoint matrix of A. This is also matrix in in M n, this is also same size square matrix. And this uh, this ijth entry here, this tilde A i j, this is ijth entry of this ijth entry. is called a cofactor ij cofactor cofactor of a these are the standard terms one usually use i will again not go to a numerical example okay so the the main theorem is this following theorem this also I will keep referring at joint determinant theorem. So, A is any matrix square matrix with entries in arbitrary field K, then if I take the adjoint of this matrix and multiply the matrix A or do the other way that is multiply A on the uh, left this, this is nothing but determinant of A times identity matrix. So, remember this matrix is a diagonal matrix with entries on the diagonal determinant A, determinant A and 0 is the diagonal matrix. So, this let us prove this first and then we will draw the consequences proof. All right. So, remember the definition of adjoint is i j th entry is tilde a i j tilde and a i j tilde is minus 1 power i plus j capital AJ. So, when you multiply okay, again I will prove only one of the equality and the other equality will follow by replacing A by A transpose. So, I will prove only the first this, this equality this equal to this that equality I will prove and this equality will follow by replacing A by A transpose or by using the row or if I use a column expansion for this then I one uses for this equality the row expansion similarly. Okay, so, what is the product A D J A times A this product is again a n cross n matrix. So, let us call it B i j. And how is how how are the B i j is computed? Then B i j will be equal to summation over k equal to one to n. So that B i B i j the entry will be the the k row here multiplied by the no uh, i th row here multiplied by the j th column here corresponding entries and added it. So I have to look for the ith row here. So, ith row here will be index first index will be i i k tilde times j column there. So, that is a k j this is the b i j the i j th entry of this product, but this is same as I just plug in what is tilde that is same as summation k is from 1 to n minus 1 power this I am writing k plus i this is here capital A capital A k i 
टाइम से कीजिए बट दिस वन नाउ यू लुक केयरफुली दिस वन द ओनली टर्म विच विल सर्वाइव हियर फॉर फॉर आई इक्वल टू जे बिकॉज इफ आई डिफरेंट फ्रॉम जे दिस वन दिस वन इज ए रिपीटेड कॉलम देर इन द को फैक्टर सो दिस इज नथिंग इज ओनली सर्वाइव फॉर आई इक्वल टू जे सो देर एंड इन दैट केस बिकॉज ऑफ द एक्सपांशन थेरम इट विल बी द डिटर्मिनेंट सो दिस इज नथिंग बट delta i j where delta i j is a kronecker delta times the determinant of a because so let me write the reason because we have proved in the expansion theorem above that determinant of a is summation k equal to 1 to n minus 1 power k plus j ए के जे कैपिटल ए के जे सी सो दैट इज वेन आई इक्वल टू जे इट इज प्रिसाइजली दिस इक्वालिटी विच आर आउट विच वी प्रूव इन एक्सपांशन थेरम दैट विल प्रिसाइजली गिव फॉर आई इक्वल टू जे इट इज डिटर्मिनेंट एंड फॉर आई नॉट इक्वल टू जे इट इज जीरो सो दैट प्रूव वॉट वी वॉन्ट so that proves what we want this product we have proved it is equal to this matrix determinant determinant and the diagonal okay now uh, some consequences okay so first of all uh suppose you have a invertible matrix if a is in gl n k that is a is invertible remember that we have uh, proved earlier that this is equivalent to checking the determinant is non zero this also uh, uh, let me just remind you this also we proved by using the standard determinant function that means a inverse exist this invertible means a inverse exist and we want to compute a inverse for the, then we can actually write down a formula for inverse then a inverse this matrix is nothing but uh, determinant inverse determinant is a non zero scalar so therefore this makes sense in the field this times the adjoint matrix because when you substitute this in that adjoint determinant formula you get the identity matrix so therefore this is the inverse and its uniqueness the, that and so on all that so this is this is how one usually computes the the determinant uh, the uh, inverse okay okay now uh, uh, i want to write one corollary but before i write one corollary uh, uh also we i want to note explicitly that adjoint of what happens to the adjoint of the transpose this is same as transpose of the adjoint just from the first equality if you replace a by a transpose you will get this also so okay now uh, another thing i want to deduce is so let me write the, this as a corollary this is usually known as kramer's rule many many such computational rules in uh, standard 
references one usually see the as a statements but not the proofs uh, uh, one reason could be because uh, calculation becomes more messier if one doesn't use standard determinant functions so and uh, we are deducing them easily because we are always using standard determinant functions and uh, also I want to take this opportunity to make one more comment that remember uh, when V is n dimensional then and we are studying this alternating let us say R linear forms on V and we have checked that when R is bigger strictly bigger than n these are all 0. So, the first time it is non zero is also that determines the function uh, determines the dimension of the vector space. So, that is the first time R n v non zero and this is one dimensional. Uh, and then uh, when you want to study um, earlier cases that is also very nice theory, but one for that one needs one needs to do uh, so called higher multilinear algebra and those will be related to in general r cross r minus of the given matrix. So, things becomes also messier for calculation, but if you keep using the alternating forms it becomes much neater also but unfortunately in this course I will not be able to do that and uh, uh, so that will uh, also it is it's the next step will be to study instead of bilinear forms. So, that will be the next next step to study concretely more bilinear forms and that will usually lead to inner product spaces and, and so on and so on. So, that will be the next course uh, beginning. Okay. So, Kramer's rule now. So, we have a system of linear equations. So, let E be a system of n linear equations in n unknowns. And that I am going to write as usually one writes like this a 1 1 x 1 plus 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 a 1 n x n equal to b 1 and this is the first equation and the nth equation is a n 1 x 1 plus 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 a n n x n equal to b n and uh, we want to solve this equation. So, usually the coefficient, so the, the coefficient matrix is with coefficient matrix coefficient matrix A which we are denoting A i j. This is now n cross n matrix over a field k. And remember when we uh, use um, Gauss illumination uh, we have noticed that uh, if you want, want to write down the solutions of this linear system of equations then first one, uh, one finds one solution by if ad hoc by trial error you see there are also methods, but let me say by uh, suppose you know one solution that means if you know a system is consistent then all solutions you can write down by using the ho corresponding homogeneous system that means by computing the kernel and 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 then we put and then we translate by by one vector uh, by one solution and, and then we get all the system and and now we have, we also know in this case so when this system we have, we have written it as ax equal to b where b is a column vector x is also think of as a column vector and um, we know 
if if x is invertible then there is a unique solution uh, not x if a is invertible if a is in gln then obviously we know how to find a solution there is a only one solution namely x equal to you multiply this equation by a inverse so a inverse a x because a inverse a is identity so x is this and this is a inverse times b and from there you can compare this is column this is also column so you compare the the corresponding component and you get the explicit formulas for x i and this is what i want to write it down but this i do it after the break okay